Greetings, Internet land and free peoples here on Mama Gaia. This is Joshua Tree with Butterfly Power coming through with a really amazing transmission today about fencing, specifically bifacial solar fencing. And I put a little country drawl on there because, you know, growing up in the high mountains of Utah in a small farming community, the gateway to the Uintas, I have fixed and worked on so much fence in my life. Well, I, while my parents were the artist woodworkers, we were the hippie family, all of my friends had farms and ranches, and this is cattle, horses, bisons, pigs, chickens, and then growing hay and crops and grains, and everyone had gardens. So fencing is near and dear to my heart. And then with all of my development experience, integrating hybrid microgrids into residential, commercial, industrial, agriculture, and mobile operations, fencing is a core structural component of all developmental projects. And I have been down the fencing rabbit hole for the past couple of weeks and been amazed after putting solar on basically everything, how integrating solar into fencing is completely transformational for all styles of development. But today we're gonna be focusing specifically how it can quantum leap solar systems and regenerative agriculture. Now it applies to all ag operations, but we're going to show the possibilities in a regenerative rotational grazing system. And so I hope you find a lot of value and get inspired to how we can continue to integrate bifacial solar fencing, but also the innovation potential in how we can um, really stack functions of many different, both capital and labor intensive systems into one elegant super system. So let's dive into the fencing rabbit hole. So just to summarize what we're going to be covering today is we're going to explore how bifacial solar fencing can radically transform solar energy systems and agricultural operations. And again, using the technical term of radical, meaning we're affecting the root, the mathematical definition. And this is a root foundational system. And we're going to look how it can reduce system installation costs for both solar, ag, and irrigation systems, the economic benefits, long-term revenue, and low capital costs through tax credits, grants, rebates, and depreciation, how we can dramatically reduce expenses, both energy expenses and lower maintenance costs for solar, ag, and irrigation systems, how we can support multi-species rotational grazings and create a very powerful protection for our crops and how we can make more power from the same panel through this incredible generation profile and the ability to make full power production from both sides of a bifacial solar panel, stack and functions. This elegant integration of power generation, energy distribution, precision irrigation, solar panel cleaning and cooling, fire protection and lighting. So starting from the macro level, Bifacial solar fencing sits within the broad category of BIPV, or Building Integrated Photovoltaics. We have an entire section on Butterfly Power dedicated to BIPV, so you can go there to learn more about it and to find a lot of inspiration on the whole spectrum of ways that we can integrate BIPV. And looking at a summary, um, BIPV is just using the solar panels as the building material itself. And when we do that, we get this incredibly strong and long-term guarantee piece of glass that also produces energy revenue. And we can use a bifacial solar panel as the roof itself, fencing, deck, and patio covers, deck railings, awnings, curtain walls, sound, wind, snow barriers, um, cladding, glazing, shading. We can integrate them as walls. And anywhere you can use a piece of glass, like windows, you can use a solar panel. And we can also create facades. Here's a couple of really excellent websites, Mitrix, Onyx Solar, and Solar Nova, that are some of the leading companies that not only produce a whole spectrum of bifacial panels for BIPV, but incredible inspiration um, of how you can integrate it into a whole spectrum of different project types. <laughs> Moving past the model, here's a couple of real world examples. Here's a deck railing and a solar fence and a beautiful tropical project where they use bifacial panels as the roof and the deck awnings. Um, we're going to focus today on using galvanized steel, but you can integrate um, multiple different panel types and how they look in translucency with other materials for the lower section or the upper section. So here this is glass with glass. Um, 
in a residential, you can mix it with plastic, wood, or cable systems. And then we can use it for road barriers or walkway barriers. Specifically in agricultural, while we're focusing on fencing today, bifacial solar panels, we can approach each project holistically. So we can use them um, BIPV as awnings, barns, corrals, and covered parking. But a hybrid generation system where we're using fencing with fixed access, dual access, or single access tracking at both the utility scale and the microgrid. Another macro um, really incredible domain is called agrovoltaics or agrophotovoltaics known as APV, which is just the combination of um, agriculture and photovoltaics. And when you bring these together, we not only create a beautiful system, but it also creates an ecosystem. And this has a whole spectrum of benefits in the food, energy, water, and soil nexus, the fuse. And agrovoltaics is the fuse that ignites an entire transformation in the way we design our projects, but specifically in how it can totally transform our farms and ranches and create a whole spectrum of benefits um, inside the entire nexus, but also how it can create independence, resiliency, and we can improve water. We have an entire section on butterflypower.org about agrovoltaics with a whole webinar where you can do a deep dive um, into the, the entire field. Now, we want to recognize that agrovoltaics and energy storage and EV microgrid is really a micro sector opportunity. And this applies to small farms, ranches, and gardens, and large farms and ranches. And generally, a microgrid, meaning for local consumption, will be 500 kilowatts or less. And a utility scale, meaning exporting power to the grid to create revenue, will be 500 kilowatts of solar generation or above. Now, it can go up or down, but those are good general guidelines. And then this is integrating not only multiple generation types, energy storage, EV fleet charging for farms and ranches, but also offering public charging for guests, customers, or just people who are driving by on the road with the ever increasing amount of electric vehicles that need to charge, particularly in rural areas. And regenerative rotational grazing, mixed crops, greenhouses, how we can integrate precision irrigation to create water conservation, increase water storage and efficiency, in the way that agrovoltaic projects can also in integrate pollinators, na uh, native species, and forest restoration. And agrovoltaics has a broad scale of applications from rural to urban and large to small. And including crops, grazing, fencing, this also applies to orchards, berry farms, vineyards, and applies equally as well in the urban, both in rooftop and small urban and urban adjacent farms and gardens. So just to create a clear summary, from an economic perspective, um, bifacial solar fencing can produce revenue and long-term contracts. So where we're exporting power to the grid and what would be called the power purchase agreement or a PPA, these are long-term contracts, often 20 to 25 years. Or if we're doing the system for self-consumption, we can permanently reduce our energy expenses. And this is such a vital aspect because when buying power from the grid as energy inflation increases, which on average has been about 5% a year, now it could be three, could be eight, but 5% is a good baseline. Our energy costs are negatively correlated with the market rate of information. But when we slip over or we switch over to producing our own power, we're now positively correlated, whether we're selling that power to the grid or we're being insulated from that inflationary expense. They have an incredible capital cost performance when we integrate tax credits, grants, rebates, and acceler uh, depreciation. And while every project is unique, a properly designed solar system can have a capital payback in three to seven years. Um, and when you have a long-term project, 20, 25, or 40 years, when you can recover all your capital and have a very long runway, to then be economically positive, the pro forma on the systems is really, really, um, it's, it's incredible. We can see better performance compared to traditional fixed um, south-facing systems. 
through cost efficiency of installation, but also power generation. And then revenue to support maintenance. In all of my years, and I have been asking everyone I know since I went down the fencing rabbit hole, have you ever heard of a fence that makes money? I mean, it's incredible. So the solar system will actually create revenue to support maintenance and repairs. And fencing traditionally is just a black hole of cost, both in labor and maintenance. And then we get super strong structural elements of 25 to 40 year, years for performance. Now, again, it applies to all agricultural, but specifically looking at regenerative rotational grazing, where we're taking a field and we're breaking it up into paddocks so we can rotate animals through in a way that's beneficial for the whole ecosystem, for the animals, for the crops, and for the soil. And that bifacial solar fencing allows for dynamic fence and corral designs for multi-species ag operations. It can also be permanent to mobile. Now, you can install a fence with footings or with wood, but today we're going to focus on a specific application using helical earth anchors where they can be permanent, semi-permanent, meaning long-term, but they can also apply to mobile. So you're trying to set up for an event or for a camp. Or as you are you know get into your grazing operation, you decide, well, maybe I want to adjust this paddock size. The helical earth anchors allow that fence system to be moved with pretty low labor cost and equipment cost and also provides incredible security and predator protection, keeping critters out and protecting our crops. And then multifunction operational performance, stack and functions. Not only can we integrate power, but integrated hydro, irrigation, animal watering, solar panel cleaning, cooling, fire protection, electric fencing, lighting, and irrigation systems where we can co-locate what are often high power loads like pumps with a solar system versus needing to run grid power often to what is a somewhat remote or long or expensive distance to get power to. Benson, the never ending job. Realranchers.com has this great article that really summarizes what a laborious process fencing is. And fencing is a major farm and ranch expense with a high initial capital and labor cost to install it, high ongoing maintenance and repair expense that is very labor intensive, and the frequency of management dramatically impacts the risk to livestock and crops. So if part of your fence goes down because of weather or because of animals or because something running into it, there's a risk your animals will get out or other critters will get in and get to your animals or your crops. Now, agdecisionmaker.com did a really great analysis of different fencing types in the United States. And it's an excellent article that I would encourage you following the link. But we've highlighted one table here from the report that shows average annual cost by fence type, looking at woven wire, barbed wire, high tensile, non-electric, and electric. And what it will show is that annual maintenance is 5 to 8% of the installation cost, really quantifying the expenses of fencing into an excellent report and an analysis. So let's look at the superstructure. As you already um, mentioned, there's many different approaches, but we're in this webinar looking at using galvanized steel, just like you would use in a normal solar array, along with bifacial solar panels. The galvanized steel is incredibly strong for wind loads, snow loads, and provides this design ability to integrate other systems on top of it, and will often carry a 25 to 40 year guarantee on the galvanized steel. Then bifacial solar modules, strongest, most highly engineered glass on the planet that is guaranteed to perform at 80% for 25 and now many companies 40 years. So to have a fence system that carries long-term guarantees with the incredible strength it provides an opportunity to greatly decrease that ongoing maintenance um, and labor expense. It also provides dynamic design potential. And looking at standard solar panels here, you could see a number of configuration. In a landscape orientation, solar panels are rectangles with the long part going horizontal. You can have a certain amount of fence space from the ground to the first panel. And then solar panels are anywhere from three to a little over four feet tall. So you would then have a fence that's four to maybe six feet tall, or you just double it and put another panel on top or you get a fence that is six to 10 feet tall. Or in portrait orientation, solar panels are about five to seven feet tall. 
So depending on how we orient the panels, we have a lot of design options and what we're trying to achieve for power production, containment, or protection from wind, snow, um, or privacy. We also get design potential depending on the size of the project. So larger fence systems, we could see higher road density to support generating power to the utility in a power purchase agreement and smaller fence systems with lower road density that are designed for generating farm self-consumption or co-locating with loads and to optimally design for a paddock system in a rotational grazing operation. There's a couple of videos here where you can see examples of both of these projects. Now let's talk about power generation profile. Wow, wow, wow. This completely blew me away. And when you're in creating a paddock system where you're going to have some fencing that can be south facing and some of it that can be east and west facing, you have the opportunity to create a very unique generation profile that is from a fixed system acts a lot more like a dual access tracking system and how we can access the full spectrum of solar power that's coming in. And this is a great video from a company called Sunstream on a project in Ireland for a dairy farm the that illustrates this really well. Parallel rows are vertically mounted double-sided solar modules. The modules produce energy from both sides. The fence runs north to south with one side of the solar modules facing east and the opposite side west. In this orientation, the modules generate at maximum in the morning and again in the evening as each side in turn is exposed to incoming sunlight. It follows that most of the solar energy is generated during milking times in the morning and evening, enabling high electricity savings as less electricity is imported from the grid. Okay, so we're going to look at this operation a, a little more later on in the webinar, but I want to really highlight how incredible this is for a couple of reasons. So in a traditional south-facing system, um, which is the red curve in this generation profile, you're going to start producing power in the morning, but it really doesn't start kicking in into about nine peaks in the midday. And then you get it till sunset, but it starts dropping off quite a bit about four or five in the afternoon. But with an east west orientation, the east side of the solar panels gets power first thing in the morning, gets a full six hours. Then your south facing fence will get like a traditional solar system, eight hours in the summer. And then the west, the other side of the same solar panel will get another six hours. So we're getting more power across the whole spectrum than just a fixed system. But what's as important is the time of day when we're getting it. As highlighted with the dairy farm where they're milking in the morning and the afternoon, the ability to get power first thing in the morning, midday, in in the afternoon, is a very beneficial generation profile. And this is also valuable because of the cost when we're buying or selling power to the grid. Most grid systems have what are called time of use and demand charges. Time of use is when you're using it. So if you try and pull power from 4 to 9 o'clock in the afternoon, it could go from 5 or 10 cents a kilowatt to 20, 30, or 40 cents a kilowatt. And then demand charges are how much energy you are actually pulling. So when you're pulling it and how much can dramatically increase the cost, which impacts the overall financial performance of your solar system. And traditional south-facing solar struggles because you're producing all this power during the midday, but starts to drop off when grid power is most expensive. Now, you can correct this by having energy storage to get you through that period, saving your sunshine to avoid that. But an east-west orientation provides power generation through that most expensive time or the most optimal time to sell back to the grid. To put this in a real world example, this is a Northern California 22 acre field with eight paddocks. And it really shows, you know, you're going to need to design the fence for a number of factors. One, solar performance, but you need it to be a functional uh, fence system for rot rotational grazing. And here we have roads and the eight paddocks. And what you can see is in the morning, the east side receives sunrise to mid morning. Then mid-morning comes around and starts hitting another angle. The south receives mid-morning to late afternoon. 
you get mid-afternoon, and then the west starts kicking in. So even though everything may not be directly east, west, or south, it allows you to really capture multiple different aspects. And this is a huge area of innovation because solar and fencing have been siloed. And now as we're designing rotational grazing operations with solar systems to really optimize for all of these factors is a very exciting field with tremendous opportunity. So I want to really highlight how incredible this is. In, in doing solar, I myself defaulted to, I'm going to do a south-facing system, and I'm going to try and optimize for optimal alignment to the south. And then I learned about east-west, where, well, maybe because of the location, it's better to actually put some on the east and the west. The fence in a vertical system allows you to do both. And in this example, we're looking at a 500-watt panel that will receive six hours from the east, or three kilowatt hours, six hours from the west to sunset, another three kilowatt hours. So taking those 12 sun hours and turning it to six kilowatt hours in total from the same panel. Compare this to a fixed system. Same 500 watt panel will produce an average of three kilowatt hours from a six sun hour average. Now that means in the winter, you're gonna be getting four hours or two kilowatt hours. And in the summer, you'll be getting eight hours or four kilowatt hours. So almost double the production from the exact same panel with way less racking when we use an east-west and south orientation in our fencing systems. And also just to give comparison, bifacial solar is a huge field of innovation where we're making power from both sides. And in this system, you'll get the full power from the beam energy on the front of the panels, and the back side of the panels would generally get about 15 to 30% of what the front side is because you're dealing with the diffuse energy or the reflected or what is called the albedo, what is coming off of the ground or what is underneath of it. And here's installation method that we're going to really look at today, which is using helical earth anchors. This is an incredible company that I've been utilizing for years called American Earth Anchors. There's many different times, types and companies. What's amazing about helical earth anchors is they can be put in by hand tools with a small crew, or you can use any piece of equipment with a PTO and an attachment. And this ability to have hand crews and be able to go into the earth in a much less disturbing way versus putting in permanent concrete footings and also the flexibility. If you need to make an adjustment in the fencing system or to make a repair for whatever reason, the ability to go out and do that with a hand crew, with hand equipment, or with a piece of farm equipment, particularly an electric tractor would be one of my favorites, is a very, very powerful innovation capacity when designing our fencing systems. And you can go to AmericanEarthAcres.com, the link here to learn more about their ground mount solar systems. So let's really got, look at how this can really make a solar system more competitive. This is a great report from NREL where they've looked at the massive decline in solar system costs over the last 20 or 12 years. So from 2010 to 2020, we saw an 82% reduction in solar system cost. And what's great about this is it shows that solar panels are usually less than 40 to maybe 35% of the total system cost. The rest of it is made up by soft costs like planning, transmission, soft costs like installation, and then the BOS, what is called the balance of system, both in hardware and in software and the inverters. Solar fencing systems can really push down in soft cost, labor installation reduction, and the hardware reduction. And because the cost of solar systems has declined so much, it means solar is becoming increasingly competitive to have an economic advantage. And so fencing system represents this really leading edge opportunity to even more push down, creating ultra efficient from a cost perspective, solar systems and performance. And then this is another report that NREL did, which is looking at the capital case of dual use agrovoltaic systems. And in this report, they looked at multiple types of systems and compared their overall costs. So they go from typical fixed PV, fixed PV with grazing, fixed PV with uh, pollinator, 
And then they look at tracker and vertical mount systems. And I want to really highlight the, the two second to last columns, which are PV crops with vertical mount and PV crops with a tracker. And what you'll see is these have some of the higher costs in total, but they also have the highest net profit. And this was looking at a vertical arrangement, but as we look at integrating more systems and bringing down the overall cost, this is a great example in the structural BL, um, balance of system and the installation of labor and equipment, how we can even further make our solar systems increasingly more competitive. So let's break down, you know, what is potential cost? Every location and system will be unique based on, you know, the geography you're working out, what you're trying to achieve. But using this steel and helical earth anchor system in a hundred feet of fence using a 500 watt panel, now you could have 300 or 400, uh, many different panel types. But a 500 watt panel is going to be around seven feet in length, which means you can put 14 panels and then we're going to use three foot earth anchors and five foot galvanized posts because we're only going up one solar panel height. That would bring a total of the 100 feet to $5,657 or $792 cost per kilowatt, which is high for a solar system. However, What's really incredible is when we add another layer of solar panels because we want to make more power or we're trying to protect against a load or create a certain level of privacy, it has this decreasing amount of cost because we're only applying a little bit more of the racking material. We're adding another solar panel. And in this case, we're moving to four foot earth anchors um, to deal with the higher load and a 10 foot galvanized pen or a galvanized steel post. So this means we're shifting the total cost to $8,500, which represents a 38% increase in system cost, but we're getting double the power. So whether we're using one level or two level is just a general example of how we can begin to quantify, you know, some of the performance in some of the other systems we're going to be comparing them to. Let's talk about stack and functions, multi-system integration. The superstructure of the fencing panel allows us not only to have that incredible containment and security, but as we're going to look at integrating precision irrigation, it allows us to have solar panel cleaning, cooling, and fire protection, and then the ability in fields to be able to have power distribution and lighting systems for work and for security. And this is such... It's such an area for potential innovation. Um, we do have a lot of maturity now in some solar fencing systems and precision irrigation is a fast expanding field. But as yet, we have yet to see anyone really bring these multiple components together. And here at Butterfly Power, we're really working to move this forward and would encourage more people to look at how we can innovate and how we can get more systems up and operating to really test out how these performance and the metric is um, really start to perform in the real world. And just to zoom in this with the helical earth anchors and one of the models we've created of integrating precision irrigation with solar panel cleaning systems and, and some lighting. Now with this strong fence, by simply putting a wire mesh at the bottom, we have the ability to create multi-species containment. So fencing for buffalo is not the same for sheep, goats, and certainly for smaller animals like chickens, ducks, rabbits, and quails. But a bifacial solar fence with the wire mesh allows us to contain all of them. And that is such a huge efficiency because in many rotational grazing operations, there's huge benefits in moving different animal types because um Buffalo do buffalo work, pigs do pigs work, chicken do chicken work, and they also all benefit from different phases of regrowth as you're letting the, the fields rest. So the ability to be able to contain large and small animals from the same fence system is a very unique and powerful aspect of bifacial solar fencing. And then crop protection. Same way you can keep large and small critters in, we can keep large and small critters out from both our crops and um, 
our livestock. And this is the same 22 acre field, just showing an example of different um, livestock types. Now, you wouldn't necessarily have all of these in the same paddocks next to each other, but it does show in that real world example, the ability to rotate multiple animals um, through a rotational grazing operation. So as we're going to look at some specific projects, I want to show a great example of a traditional solar system. And this is the Concho Valley Electric Cooperative Community Solar Project in Texas. And this is a 1.3 megawatt DC power, which means it's a one megawatt AC power using about 3,700, um, 350 watt panels in a single axis tracking system. And this would be a traditional approach trying to really consolidate the solar system, keeping all the vegetation and management out, it doesn't really allow for much dual use. Maybe you could put some pollinator friendly plants in here, but it's pretty limited in dual use opportunities. And then bifacial solar fencing is space efficient, you know, compared to a, a, a fixed mount system because of the vertical orientation, we're only taking up two to maybe six inches at the max. And yet we get all of this usable space in between combined with an incredible power production um, profile. This is another NREL report, really looking at um, some of the project expenses in a performant. In this example, they're looking at a 10 megawatt um, single access mounting, single access tracking system in Denver, Colorado. That 10 megawatts costs about $25 million to install. But what I wanna really highlight here is the operational expenses. Annually, it costs $221,000, and over 25 years, the NPV on that is over $2 million. Now, of that, the three categories that I've highlighted here, the annual expense for cleaning and vegetation management is $41,000 of the two hundred and twenty. dollars Over 25 years, that represents $450,000 of the overall $2 million in expenses. So that 22% is a huge opportunity to radically improve the financial performance through integrating a bifacial solar fencing system compared to a ground mount system. So let's talk about water. Water is life. And irrigation is a system that requires infrastructure. And so the ability to integrate precision irrigation with agrovoltaics and use the superstructure of the solar system as dual use for the precision irrigation is a huge, huge efficiency opportunity. And then how we can use that system to reach the crops and to clean the panels. So when we talk about water use, it's important to recognize that the two largest cons consumer sectors are agriculture and power generation. Agriculture is by far the largest, consuming 41% of total water withdrawal. And water withdrawal is the amount of water that is removed from a water resource, lake or a river, but isn't returned to the source that's available. Water consumed is the amount of water removed for use and not returned to its source. So second to agriculture is electrical power plants, which use 39% of the water we withdraw and because they recirculate a lot of it, they only use 3% of the consumption. But with bifacial solar fencing and precision irrigation inside of an agrovoltaic system, we're talking about massive efficiency in what is over 80% of our current water consumption. And in a time of drought, where water is so foundational to all aspects of our life, this is an incredible area of innovation that we can create a lot more efficiency, be more respectful and better honor our water resources and get more production, not less. Just like fencing, irrigations are a major farm and ranch expense. And the only thing I've done more than fix and fence and haul and hay is haul and pipe. And there's lots of different approaches. You know, you can do flood irrigation, but sprinkler irrigation where you're moving pipes daily, in my case, I did it first thing in the morning before breakfast and then right before dinner at night is very labor intensive. So irrigation, ships, irrigation systems have high initial capital and labor costs for installation, high ongoing maintenance and repair expense, labor intensive, 
and the frequency of management dramatically impacts performance. Now, the example in the top is a pivot line. Pivot lines create massive efficiency and the ability to more precisely get water to the crops, but require a high capital cost to put in all this infrastructure to move it. And then also have a high power cost. Often these pivot lines require three phase high amperage power that you need to be able to get to the pivot line location. And there's some um, great examples of links here below um, on pivot lines. And one we want to really highlight is this great report that was done by Alabama A&M and Auburn Agriculture Extension, where they looked at precision irrigation and they looked at three scenarios of putting in a pivot line. And the report is great with a lot of excellent information. But I want to highlight case one, which is a center pivot line with 1,300 foot length and is electric power using pond source as the water. And that area covered 64 acres. Now, the cost of this from the pivot lines, the pumps, the wiring, the upgrade to the panel, three phase utility power, the valves fittings, the remotes and the screens is $136,000. So an excellent example of the high capital cost that would then create labor and savings efficiencies. The ability to take and create a pasture hydro grid where we're creating a rotational grazing paddock system with precision irrigation using the super six, superstructure of the fence is, yeah, just a powerful area of innovation. So there's lots of examples of precision irrigation here. I just showed one on a fence system. And then we're going to look at solar panel cleaning technology and how we can integrate them into the fence to keep the panels clean. And while we're doing this, we're always irrigating um, our pasture land. This is a great company called RST Clean Tech Solutions. And their video here really sums up um, the huge opportunity in improving performance of solar systems through cleaning. Solar panels are making the world a better place. But over time, solar panels get dirty resulting in less energy production. This soiling hurts investment returns and increases your electricity bills. So what can you do to keep your solar panels performing optimally? Keep your panels clean all the time. RST CleanTech has developed a fully automated cleaning system that cleans your panels every week, virtually eliminating soiling losses. This can increase energy production by up to 30%. The RST system is the first solution to economically address panel soiling and maximize power production. Current cleaning methods present several problems. Cleaning is done periodically, meaning your solar panels will get dirty again. Paying for only a few weeks of extra production is not cost effective. Cleaning panels on a hot day with cold water can cause the glass to crack. And if soft water is not used, limescale buildup can destroy the panel. In addition to this, these methods use chemical solvents, high pressure, and abrasive materials, all things that over time will wear on the panels and can void the warranty. With the RST cleaning system, you don't have to worry about any of these things. The system will make you money by minimizing soiling losses, and it will also preserve your panel warranty. Our patented system purifies the water from limescale, the water is then applied at low pressure at night when the temperatures are cooler. Soiling on the panels won't build up because they are cleaned every week. And that's why we don't need high pressure, chemicals, or abrasives to keep your panels clean. RST system is based on drip irrigation technology and has been field tested since 2011 on millions of panels. The simple and ingenious design is suitable for almost all solar arrays, from residential rooftops to utility scale tracking systems. The system is easy to use through our RST CleanTech app, allowing you to remotely control your cleaning and notifying you of faults. So this, you know, RST is focused on how much you can improve performance by keeping your panels clean and how every time there's a dust storm or a storm or you get birds coming through and pooping on it, um, Cleaning it weekly can increase your solar production by 30%. Along with the fact that whenever those events happen to get your panels dirty, you have to go out and immediately address it or you're losing power until the panels get clean. 
Now, every time you're irrigating your fields or you're cleaning your panels, you're improving your solar system performance and keeping them clean. So this is this is just incredible when we looked at that 22% of cleaning um, in vegetation management and how we can create an incredible amount of efficiency in both irrigation operations and solar panel cleaning. And just to highlight, you know, solar panel cleaning, whether it's in a fixed mount, high ongoing expense, labor and equipment intensive, and the frequency dramatically impacts system performance. And even in a field mount, when you're using equipment, and often that equipment would be diesel or gas powered, same things apply. And then vegetation management. So in a traditional system, you're going to have someone out there with equipment, which often gas powered, often would be two cycle, spewing all this exhaust and taking all that labor and uh, time to keep the plants down. And now we have robots and robots are certainly better because they can use less resources. And you got robots doing the work. But in a regenerative rotational grazing system, the critters are going to do all that management. And rather than just cutting them down, the critters are going to bring that whole spectrum of benefits. The cows are going to do calves work with the hooves and their urine and their uh, manure. Chickens are going to come in and do their work with their pecking and their scratching and ducks and pigs. So using the animals to do the work can also dramatically not only improve the holistic health of the entire ecosystem, but can really radically bring down that high ongoing expense of a solar system. And we can design systems that allow machinery to operate if we need to come through as well. So let's look at a couple of examples. Um, this is a great one in Germany, which would be utility scale, where they're using higher row density and they're using um, double row panel heights. And this is four point megawatts that sits on 14 hectares and was put into operation in 2020. Next Sun is the company who installed this, and they have a lot of great uh, agrovoltaic projects that you can follow down to their website. And then picking back up on the Sunstream project in Ireland, this is a self-consumption project. And there's a couple of really interesting aspects. We already looked at the video, but how it was tailored because of a dairy ag operation where they're milking in the morning and in the evening with east-west orientation perfectly allows them to be able to offset that and produce power when it is needed. And this is another interesting project because they're taking that electrical power and putting it into a 500 liter hot water tank, creating another level of energy storage besides batteries and how much efficiency that can create versus using natural gas or a boiler um, or certainly electrical power trying to heat them, uh, heat their water. So Sunstream is a great website and you can dive further into this use case. So let's look at a project and how we can begin to look at this holistically. You know, this is a project we've been working on in Southern Utah of a ranch that's 165 acres. And rather than zooming in and saying, okay, we want to create, you know, this size of microgrid or we want to do a utility scale one megawatt system, we like to take a holistic approach where we say, okay, what is the total opportunity in the power grid, the hydro, hydro grid, the ag grid, and the soil grid? And then how can we optimally design a system that can happen in phases? Many projects don't want to have exact, everything happen in year one. That could happen. But when we take a longer term approach, we realize it's a lot more like a chess match. And if we begin here, year two, year three, year five, we can see how we can expand it using the resources and the economic efficiencies and revenue we're creating to expand it into the future. So in this example of the 165 acres, 10 acres hold the ranch operations. This is the buildings and the houses and the barns and the corrals. This is where we would define as the microgrid. And then they have 110 acres of pasture, which would be excellent for utility scale opportunity. 40 acres of forest and riparian and then have a unique little sliver right along a scenic byway, 12, which is a very, high, uh, very highly traveled road. So taking this approach, you say, well, what is the total potential? And then how do we bring it back to the optimal design? Looking at the economic analysis and the financing options, microgrid utility scale design and engineering. What is the feasibility study? What does the grid want? And what are the opportunities to bring it 
energy storage for grid support services, integrate an EV fleet for farm and ranch operations, and provide a charging wet work to uh, gas customers and public access, which is an incredible revenue opportunity to turbocharge a microgrid or utility scale operation because we're getting all that high power demand to fill up those EVs and we get to control the rates versus in a PPA, you're going to come into a negotiation with the grid that will buy it at the power inside of the power purchase agreement. Then we can look at a water feasibility study, how we can better integrate and utilize the water resources with our irrigation systems, pollinators, and native um, species along with forest management, and then how are we impacting the soil. And then really highlighting the power system, both the microgrid and the utility scale, that you could do one or the other, but often you're going to want to do both. Because at the utility scale, you're going to be a qualifying facility, and you're going to generate that to meet the grid demand. But if in the microgrid, you have the plans for, say, expansion, maybe you're going to build more houses, or you're going to want to modify part of the ranch or the farm, the PPA is a set contract that you need to sell a certain amount of power. That's the agreement. So trying to say, well, now we want to take more power in the future doesn't work. So oftentimes you're going to want to have an individual microgrid for self-consumption and then design the utility scale project to provide the power per the power purchase agreement. But from that project level, we can zoom down to the individual paddock within the field and say, inside of one paddock, we have the opportunity to integrate fencing, but we can also put in other tracking systems that have another spectrum of benefits. And in our agrovoltaic presentation, we'll take a deeper look at dual access um, and single access tracking systems and how they really impact in so many beautiful ways the fuse, the food, energy, water, soil nexus. But down the fencing rabbit hole, one of the really fascinating parts that I myself am just beginning to understand and play with this there's a relationship in this design between the ratio of a tracking system or a solar system with the fencing and how we can really see between the power generation profile of the fencing with the tracking system, a really interesting relationship. So here we see an 80% tracking system, 21% um, of the bifacial solar fence in a two-level system in one paddock. But then when we zoom out and say, well, what if we wanted to take 20 acres to do an agrovoltaic installation where we're going to do dual access tracking and we're going to do eight different paddocks inside of the 20 acres? Well, the same relationship um, plays out. And there's a lot of calculations in here, and you can download this at butterflypower.org. But in this system, in the 20 acres, we're producing 1.5, 1.95 megawatts. And of that, 73% is coming from the trackers and 26% is coming from the solar fence. So this relationship and how we design for optimal ag, optimal power systems is a real area of innovation that we're going to continue to push forward here at butterflypower.org and would encourage more people to begin to dive into how can we integrate and create elegant systems that are not only high performance, are super productive because we're producing in multiple different spectrums. And even in this approach, we have something that's more utilitarian, you know, where we're using squares, but there's also an aesthetic design to this, where how can we design projects that not only perform optimally, but are architecturally stunning, that work with the landscape, that we're being conscious of what we're putting into the view corridor, because so many of these projects already sit in really beautiful and pristine um, areas with great viewscapes. So how we're impacting all of the other critters and all of the other humans are looking at the project is another consideration. And then just summing up, looking at that from the 20 acres from the field and the ratio of 85 to 15 percent of what we can produce from the 20 acres. So I hope you found this look at bifacial solar fencing valuable. And the intention is to spot, inspire more 
of us to begin seeing how can we integrate bifacial solar fencing and really open up the potential of how we can integrate and stack functions of power, rotational grazing, irrigation systems, and create these super systems that have a whole spectrum of benefits while creating projects that are way more competitive because we're creating collapsing irrigation, solar and fencing into one structure and then a whole spectrum of benefits that will come out. So come and follow us here at butterflypower.org if you want to look at more. If you found this valuable, it would be a blessing if you wanted to like or share this specifically with farmers or ranchers or if you know someone who's a property or a project owner or a developer in construction. Um, we do work with select projects and helping them design, implement, um, and how they can operate them moving forward. But most importantly, just a, a prayer for inspiration that, you know, I really feel that we're the greatest of all generations, um, if only because we've been blessed with so much. And as we are in this time of great fundamental change that we are the ones who have the opportunity to quantum leap us to living in the new earth in full integrity, as Bucky would say, integritas in wholeness and how we can continue to strive to create more resilience, more freedom, more prosperity um, and how we can continue um, as our ancestors have always done to be good stewards and that when we come into greater integrity, all life benefits. And that Mama Earth and the, the power of the sun is so abundant with limitless potential that we're just beginning to tap. So we are the butterfly generation. It's time to rise and shine. It's time for us to transform and fly. <laughs>